Jesus says in A Course in Miracles, when you have learned how to decide with God, all decisions become as easy and as right as breathing. There is no effort and you will be led as gently as if you were being carried down a quiet path in summer. <laughs> Seems like the perfect quote for this weekend, living under Christ's control, clueless, carefree and cared for. And I think Jeff sort of hit the nail on the head there when he talked about not necessarily being in joy all the time, but, but a lot of the time, and he's not necessarily out of joy for long when he's not. And that really feels like what living under Christ's control is about. It's moving in the direction of, you know, moving in the direction of awakening. And it's the spirit that's always leading us there. If we're willing to listen, he's always talking to us. We just need to be able to hear that. So I just feel very honored and actually very blessed to be with you all here this weekend. I'm so grateful you've taken the times out of your lives to be able to be here with us and joining because the essence I feel of these retreats is what we're doing right now, just being together, you know, joining in mind and in heart with that pure intention of, of awakening, of letting go of this, this dream. It's certainly my desire and I just feel very grateful, so thank you. I think I hear the angel singing. <laughs> Svava has channeled so many beautiful songs from the angels and we're going to be blessed with one of them right now. So take it away, Svava. Thank you, Michael. And yeah, hi everyone. I'm just, yeah, like Michael said, so honored to be here with all of you. Thank you for joining us. And um, yeah, I received uh, two new songs last week and this one I'm gonna I'm gonna sing now is called bring it back Bye. 
loves you so loves you so Thank you. Okay. For now, we will go over to David and Jason. Hi, everyone. <laughs> nice to see you again. Oh, isn't it wonderful, these intimate online gatherings that we have, where we're just, it's like we're in the same room, joining together over these very deep topics and I can feel the acceleration, the speed up that happens when we do this. You know, we, we love this uh, platform. We love Zoom because we can, we just look and we see all your faces and, mm. and you see our faces and we're feeling that deep connection uh, of mighty companionship, like a fellowship of Christ. And what a great topic this time, under Christ's control. Clueless, carefree, and cared for. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's a great one, actually. <laughs> I, just while Salva was singing, just all these, how perfect it is for me, was flashing through my mind, and I thought, oh, this is my retreat, so... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I was just... Oh. <laughs> this is what I <laughs> Yeah, I just was thinking how involved I'd been in the, in the ministry for the past three, four months, and then all of a sudden, of last week, it just turned on a dime, and I've been unwinding from things, and I still haven't quite unwound from everything, and then it's really to give me permission to feel what it is, is now really for me, and I had this dream last night, it just went through my mind again that... Uh, yeah, the only, the only problem, the only reason anything difficult is that you think you know something. <laughs> whether it be how to run a ministry, whether it be how certain decisions would be made. And if you're coming from that concept or context, then when it goes, that's, that's where the pain is. And so this is all just coming to my awareness now. So I'd love to do this weekend but not knowing <laughs> what you would hear it's easy. <laughs> that's great. And the song, Bring It Back, Let Go, there it is. Right. That's so good. So you know, a lot of you know how much I like to use movies and, and we, of course we have our Movie Watchers Guide to Enlightenment and our Mystical Mind Training. We use a lot of movies, movie clips there, but I also just, just in terms of the movie metaphor, you know, going to a theater, uh, going inside, sitting down in your chair, and then as the, the lights go off and the, the show starts, the movie starts, you know, you, you lose yourself in the movie. And, uh, and, and it's quite an emotional ride. And you don't even know what all emotions are going to surface during that movie. But, but actually, being under Christ's control is really bringing it back, as Swava shared in her song, you know, bringing it all back to the mind. But we need a lot of practice. We can't just be told to bring it back. We actually have to really practice this day after day, moment after moment, really to get in touch with our mind. Because that's basically the why the world was made. The ego made the cosmos, linear time, to keep us distracted from our mind. It doesn't, it doesn't want us to get in touch with our Christ mind. It doesn't even want us to get in touch with the power of our mind, the power of thoughts. And, and it doesn't want us to get in touch with the idea that we can actually control the direction of our thinking. We can actually change the purpose of our mind from one of hatred and fear and guilt to, to one of forgiveness and, and peace and joy and love. And admittedly, that's a big turnaround to make that change, but that's why we're here. That's why we're all on the, the online retreat together. That's what it's all about. And Jason was just talking about, you know, even getting attached to the role of, of running a ministry. You know, part of, of 
just beginning to go in the direction of, of being under Christ's control is to start to allow ourselves permission to loosen from the roles where we have placed our identity. And, and you were noticing that role. Um, instead of just um, waking up every day and, and as soon as your eyes open, you're in the role and you just go through all these roles every day, go to sleep at night and then repetitively play the same roles over and over and over, there has to be a way for us to begin to loosen from those roles. And um, there are lots of ways to practice this and, and there are a lot of symbols, but one of the things I always enjoyed is uh, sometimes when Jason and I would go to the movie theater, Jason is a, a theater hopper. Any of you know what a theater <laughs> hopper is? <laughs> he goes and hops from theater to theater, uh, hopping into different movies. <laughs> and, uh, and so he may take in three, four, depending on how big the theater is, seven, whatever. But you can just imagine how that, how you, you would have a bit of detachment from the characters <laughs> if you just pop into the theater at any point of the movie. You don't know the movie, you don't know the plot, uh, you're just in there and it's just the, the characters. And then you shift to another one. This is kind of your way of reincarnating. This is the way, instead of going to the theater, J Jason reincarnates <laughs> and pops in and out of movies. But you see that what it would do, it would loosen you from thinking, getting too identified in there with the roles. Because that's where the heaviness comes in. That's where the repetition comes in, the guilt. And I was thinking before we started, you know, a lot of you know the movie uh, Groundhog Day, where Phil, the weatherman, repeats the same day over and over and over. How many of you have actually had that experience where you, f you feel like you're in, in the Groundhog Day movie? You, you know, the alarm's going off, you're brushing your teeth, you're going around, okay, there we see some hands coming up. <laughs> Lots of hands. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of hands. Now, Groundhog Day is a good example of being under under ego control because because it's like you're in the loop and and you just keep looping over and over and over again and a symbol of moving towards Christ control would be to get to the point where you actually start pondering what exactly am I repeating these things for is there is there a point to all this repetition is there a point to going through these things over and over. Is, is it that my mind is so conditioned that I don't even question the repetition anymore or have I just given myself completely over and then you start to feel bored or you start to feel your life is mundane or you, you need more excitement, you need some spice to come in there because the repetition is so thick. It's just so thick. So I think that's going to be one of the things we'd like to explore and we of course will use what is going on for you. We want to hear from you, we want to hear what is it that, that is making you feel so trapped. What is it in your perception where the repetition is so thick? Sometimes, of course you've written in some beautiful questions again. We've got those and also, we love to, to hear from you as we go into this, but to me, we're going at a very deep topic because we're getting at that, that control mechanism and the ego loves to control the form and control the world in order to achieve a, a sense of stability. And that control is called judgment. And then when you judge, you may minimize the fear and you may minimize the guilt, but you don't really let it go. It's just still there, even though you seem to have a bit of control over it. You seem to, it's like manageable fear. The ego doesn't want you to question the whole belief in fear, because the ego will be out of business if you do that. 
but it wants you to have a manageable amount of fear where you aren't going to let go of the ego entirely, but you're going to learn how to tolerate it or tolerate the human condition and tolerate these repetitious uh, days that just go on and on, day after day after day, and it wants you to, uh, to tolerate that instead of actually reaching a point where you say, no, this is, I'm worth more than this. I'm worth much more than this. Can we talk about mm -hmm. that? Because mm -hmm. I was really just thinking about this today, because like Jesus says in the Course, whenever you feel fear, it's because you've, you're, you're doing something that I've guided you not to do, right? But today, in the lesson that you were reading, he said, uh, whenever you feel fear, it's because the ego is riding along on the journey, which actually felt m more authentic in the moment to me, like lighter, like there's something happening. But I, I have been like the past three hours or something, just some kind of really intense fear there. Is there. And it's like, what do you do to fix it? What do you do to stop it? But it's not it. It's like, so I'm like, what? It, yeah, this is great. I'm like, <laughs> maybe you could. <laughs> well, I think for us to get really clear about releasing to Christ control, it, we, we can look, look at it in a number of different ways. Recently I was on Facebook and um, a friend of mine, uh, Olga, uh, had, had commented, um, I still need more clarification on this because she was, she, she saw that quote that I use, I teach this quote so much from the Course, what do you want, freedom of the body or freedom of the mind for both you cannot have. And she said, can you give me a little more clarity on that? Why can't I have both? <laughs> I want both. <laughs> I want freedom of the body and freedom of the mind. But Jesus is saying both you cannot have because they're two different purposes. One is a false ego definition of freedom, which isn't freedom at all. It's just pseudo-freedom. And then when you follow that road, the ego is on the ride and you may do all kinds of things, the body can do all kinds of things, trying to achieve that freedom of the body, and then there's still this kind of emptiness, like, hmm, it's not working. And then the freedom of the mind is like the matrix, you know, uh, Morpheus saying to Neo, I want to free your mind. That's, that's a freedom that's coming from release of judgments, release of categorizing, release of comparison, release of competition. You know, that's what's going to actually free the mind. So, if we go into this a little closer, we can also see that, you know, for our community we always talk about no private thoughts and no people pleasing. The reason that we focus on not holding on to private thoughts or not stuffing them down and suppressing them or repressing them is because to the extent that they're valued and held on to and to the extent that they're pushed down and kept held on to uh, then the mind actually wants privacy and it wants um, it wants to be in charge of the body. It wants to be the ruler of what the body does. And it will even generate ideas like freedom of the body, or uh, uh, wealth of the body, or all kinds of different things just to maintain that. But what Jesus is calling us to is He's calling us to let these thoughts be given over to me so that they can be under my control. That's where the title comes from, you know, under Christ's control is basically you're giving those thoughts over to Jesus and saying, here, I can't, I've not been able to uh, successfully free my mind with these thoughts, but if you use them, you direct the behavior, you direct my words, you direct my actions, let these thoughts be under your control, and then Jesus says you'll 
be able to be taken into that place of innocence, of, of true freedom, freedom of the mind. So I had a, another friend of mine who wrote to me and he said, I don't even like that, that title of your on, upcoming online retreat, Under Christ's Control. He said, I don't like that title. And he said, maybe it's just the control word. I don't like that. I don't even like that word. I don't like that word control and don't put it next to Christ either. It doesn't sound good. And I said, well, it's, it's kind of from absence from felicity. Uh, Jesus telling Helen Shuckman, a good scribe should be under Christ control. Because she was always wanting to be very autonomous with her scribal ability. I'll do it whenever I want to. And she even tried to, to do a, like a strike, a writing strike on Jesus, where she absolutely refused to write down Jesus' words. And this went on for uh, quite a few days until she, she just had so much uh, anxiety and tension built up. And that's when this thing came in, a good scribe should be under Christ's control. So really, this is for all of us. And I'm thinking back to the days when I traveled with my friend Restup, where she, she loved all these movie metaphors, but she really liked the Pinocchio metaphor. You know, where Pinocchio wants to be a real boy. He's a puppet, but he wants to be a real boy. And then he goes to Pleasure Island and things go downhill <laughs> from there. But it's a very good uh, fairy tale. It's a, it's a good fairy tale for all of us because what Resta would say is, I want to be put back on the strings. In other words, it's from this sense of autonomy, from the sense of wanting to have personal control, which is egoic, over the body. And even when you're struggling, if you're struggling with weight issues, you're trying to control the body. If you're, if you're struggling with uh, issues around body image, if you're, if you're struggling with issues about doing things that you don't really want to do, or wishing you could be doing other things, and there's still this idea that you have direct control over the body, it's still an, an autonomous, egoic wish to control that's underneath it. And that's where the guilt comes in and the fear comes in. Resta would say, put me back on the strings. She was always saying, put me back on the strings. I want to be under Christ's control. I would rather let Jesus and the Holy Spirit be using my body. And, and she did uh, work on that quite a lot. She had like a, over 170 songs that came through her when she was allowing it to come through her, to scribe the songs, and then also to, to play the songs on the guitar and sing them. So that's kind of the core mm. of where we're going with all this. That's where the core issue is right there. That's where the control is. So does the, does the fear get more intense because I'm about well, maybe just coming on here, like having to be here. <laughs> <laughs> having to be here. <laughs> or, like, or like something's about to be asked of me that, and that's where the, because why would it get so intense right when you arrive? <laughs> <laughs> you were doing fine till I showed up. <laughs> it was manageable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, you know, I think all of us are like, well, that it sounds good sentimentally, but what is Jesus going to actually have me do? Am I going to have to go out on the street corner and, and preach about the kingdom of heaven? You know, or what exactly is the Spirit going to have me do? And, and that's kind of the, that is just an ego fear of letting go of, of running the show. It's, that's, that's basically what it is. You know, for me, I, I had to ease my way ease my way into things, and then it was more like, okay, Jesus, you're going to have to show me. You're going to have to, to do it through me and show me that this is going to work out. And then uh, it, we, we end up doing all kinds of things we never imagined doing, and Suava ends up taking down all these songs. I think she's got 60 or 70 songs and just wrote, just had an album come through her, and all kinds of things that, that we never would even imagine we would be doing come when we surrender, when we just say, mm. use me. Mm. So maybe that's part of it. You're just, now it's getting closer into that use me mm. phase. What, what will be asked of me? Mm. And I think that's a, that's a common fear. Like if I'm under Christ's control, oh my God, what will the Holy Spirit say through me and do through me? 
how is, how is my family going to take this? <laughs> and you know, that, that gets me into, I was looking at some of the questions and um, a lot of the questions that are, were written in, <coughs> Uh, whether it's Rich, I love your your question about Marianne uh, Williamson running for president, and then I mean I went through all the questions, and basically a lot of them have to do whether it's it's dealing with um, with parents, it's dealing with uh, physical conditions, it's dealing with children. Um, Bridget wrote in about her her arthritis. Or, or, um. And, and her age and her job. Um, I, and Heike wrote in about her parents, um, her father having dementia and, and her mother being increasingly unable to, to function and so on and so forth. When I was reading through these questions, what came to me was this idea of Forgetting that we're dreaming, getting caught up into these roles, and then getting caught into this habitual uh, predicament of, of analyzing people and judging their motives. Because Jesus tells us in the Course that you can't, you can't accurately judge the motives of anyone without using the ego. Whenever you're judging the motives of anyone, if, if we look at somebody who's a Course in Miracles teacher like Marianne Williamson running for President of the United States and we judge her motives, we say, what is she doing? What is she doing that for? Whatever it is, positively or negatively, then we're using, we're activating the ego to <laughs> Judge the motives of Marianne, or it could be with your parents, it could be with your children. Uh, maybe you do it with the person you think you are, you're constantly judging the motives of that person. What are they up to? There's <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of dissociation going on there, but <laughs> what, what were they thinking? Why, why did I do that? You know, some of you have done something and then uh, on God's good earth, why did I decide to do something that is so stupid or so dumb? And so that's like a judgment of the, of the personal self. But what it is, is every time we are judging the motives of others, we're, we're very much caught up into the roles. And very much looking outside of ourselves, outside of our mind, and we're asking the why question. We're asking, what are they up to? Why did they do that? But we're asking it of them. We're asking it of the dream characters. Mm -hmm. We're not bringing it back to, like the song that Slava just sang, bring it back. We're not bringing it back to the mind. What, what is it for for me? What is it for for my own motive? We're asking it in terms of these dream characters. And then when we do this, we've already bought the bait of the ego, because you cannot analyze the motives of others without activating and using the ego. And the purpose of the Course is for us not to engage the ego, not to activate it, not to use it at all. Because it's a poor counselor, it's a poor teacher. Uh, it's, it doesn't know who it is, it doesn't know who, who we are, it doesn't know that we're the Christ, the Holy Son of God, and therefore, at one point Jesus says the ego knows nothing. It, it, it doesn't even know anything at all. And why would you look to that for your advisor, your counselor, your teacher? Why would you try to use it to to analyze the motives of others when you are simply perpetuating an ego identification every time that happens. So that's just an example of a very, very bad habit that keeps Groundhog Day going. And we have to come to another way of, of approaching our life, another way of going towards healing, towards wholeness, towards love and light, by trusting the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the guidance of Jesus, to tell us 
if we're to say anything, if we're to do anything, if we're to go, if we're to have time back and rest, to step back. That's what you've been looking at lately, is just this idea of being actually very active, and th there was a role activated there, and then now it's like a stepping back from that role. Mm -hmm. And facing whatever emotions come from that as well. Mm. So it's very profound. Very, very profound. And you might imagine that if you start to loosen from these past references and these past motives that you've had, you're just opening your mind up to be used in a new way. You're opening to the purpose of peace. You're p opening to a state of mind that is tranquil. You're even opening to a new definition of, of worth, because instead of your worth being on how much did you get done, and what did you do, it's opening to your worth being tied to your state of mind. What, what emotion am I experiencing? My peace blesses the whole world. My holiness blesses the whole world. There's nothing my holiness cannot do. You see how Jesus is starting to teach us that our state of mind is what's important. And our state of mind is what we have and are. So it's not a product. It's not an outcome. It's not something that can be found on a resume or written up in terms of a, a life novel, it's not going to be found in, in any of those things. It's actually only going to be discovered as a state of mind. So you can see how radically different this is. Sometimes even people, when they hear that clueless, uh, carefree and cared for, they, they think, wow, that sounds like Easy Street, you know? And in one sense, it is, it is very easy, but also, you have to first put the effort of your mind in being vigilant for God, and being vigilant for your peace of mind, and vigilant against this ego thinking, that's where the effort comes in, before you discover this state of mind that is so easy, that is so simple, that is so natural. So it does seem to take effort to turn the tables, to reverse the thinking, to reverse the thinking of your mind completely. That is where the effort seems to come in. So we're going to, we're doing our meet and greet, our Friday night meet and greet. <laughs> and we've got a pretty good flavoring of uh, some questions here, but before we get into them too deeply, I would like to know what it is that you're coming to this online retreat for, in the sense of what does that mean to you when you hear those words, under Christ's control? How does that apply to your life? And, and if you have a, a, a hunch that there is something wonderful <laughs> about that, uh, what is it where or you feel trapped. What is it that you feel is holding you back? What is it that you feel is keeping the, the, the repetition going? The predictability of the, of the script? What is it that's on your heart that really is looking for an exposure and a release? Maybe we should try to open it up and I just love hearing from you and hearing what's going on in your mind tonight as we talk about this amazing topic and these, this amazing opportunity we have for freedom to really break free.
Okay, go ahead, Patrick. Hi, everyone. Hi there. Hi. I've been doing the same thing for a long time. I've had the same job for a long time. I've been uh, married to the same person for many years. And uh, when I went to Mexico last year, I decided I wanted to move to Mexico and uh, sell my house and leave my wife. Um, but I realized that um, the outward um, behavior is not so important as, you know, the inner uh, state of mind. Um, but now, um, I don't know, it's, it's been a slow process trying to, you know, uh, settle all my personal affairs and, um, and, you know, be in agreement with my partner as um, I'd like to go fast and other people seem to be going um, slower. So uh, that's the kind of the block I feel. I feel like I'm kind of, you know, enmeshed in all this gooey uh, karma or whatever it is. And it's hard to, um, it's not hard, but I just, I have to kind of surrender to what's going on rather than to my, you know, my personal agenda. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm the idea of, you know, being in a totally different situation where I can, uh, uh maybe, you know, just not have any, not have the same kind of restraints on me and just being able to surrender. Um, I don't know, maybe it's, it's, uh, the wrong kind of, you know, I could do that now, but for some reason, I think if I have different circumstances, I'd be, you know, it'd be easier to, to uh, surrender. So I don't know, maybe if you can respond to that, please. Yeah, thank you. It's, I, I feel like that's one of the values of these online retreats is it's kind of like, it's, it's stirring up your motivation for, for expansiveness, for, for release. Uh, there's a movie that's one of the, like classic movies that is part of the community. It's it's, it's about the, the life of Saint Francis, brother, son, sister Moon, and there's a song in there that that literally has has the words, day by day, stone by stone. Build your secret surely. Uh, it's 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 almost like you. The secret is is I'm going to escape. We, I you know, <laughs> nobody nobody knows it, <laughs> but it's a little bit like the Shawshank uh, Redemption, you know, <laughs> with uh, with with a character who who feels imprisoned, but also has a steadfast devotion to doing whatever is required and, and keeping the faith and keeping the fire bright and keeping the spark bright and, and having that, that steadfastness to move in, in the direction. And um, I can certainly relate to that. I, I can think back to the time uh, when I was uh, in uh, school and the times when I was doing co-op <laughs> Uh, things and I was I felt like I was going through the motions but but there was a spark in me and even if that spark was just something like there has to be more there has to be more I know there's more <laughs> I don't know fully what it is but I know it's there then that that really motivated me uh, to go forward and move in the direction that I was being called and it took a form of, I mean, I, I had simple lunches and I, I basically focused my energy like a beam of light uh, towards the direction that I was being called in the everyday, in the day-to-day -day activities, you know, keeping the, the spark bright. Yeah, I, I'd like to share a bit about that too because I had a relationship where there even seemed to be a contract and when I felt the guidance to end it and the 
people around me, some of them didn't necessarily agree. It was an interesting situation, like, what do I do? Because everything's supposed to be flow, flowy and you're like a garden stream or whatever that quote. It wasn't exactly a garden, a garden <laughs> stream. But it was a really powerful assignment for me because what I had to do was like what David said, have his beam focused and and state clearly what I felt in the moment. And then this big reaction would come and then all sorts of demands and anger and whatever. And then I just actually had to meet those demands in a very fresh and new way. It was like a real deep prayerful time. What are they really asking for? What can I give that? And when I would meet it, the mind would just soften so beautifully and we'd be in this deep holy encounter. And then they would do the part that I had asked under no duress and totally from grace and, and voluntarily. And then another request would come in and it would be the same thing. Meet the demand. And I have to see my personal agenda to make the changes, to, in your case, to go to Mexico. There is an agenda underneath. Like once you hear the guidance, it's like, okay, well now I personally got to make it happen. But no, you don't. You just, this is the whole retreat. You do your part. You, you take a step forward. And if there's obstacles to clear, he'll do it as we practice our training. So I... I, I want more of that. I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. So. Yeah. And we, I have to say, oh my gosh, following the course and with this community of mighty companions, um, I just feel like I've been so touched by the devotion that I see where people feel a strong calling and they just, they go for it, but it seems to take a while. And, um, uh, uh, who is it? Our friend that's uh, been living in her car and uh, is going going with Eric. Eric oh, is Tamara. Under. Tamara. Tamara has gone through a phase recently where she's been uh, living in her Rev Four, and she loves <laughs> gearing up and gearing up and uh, and there's Michael too. Michael, I you know Michael felt this calling and he felt he was to separate, divorce his wife and, and, and leave his career and do all these kind of things. And uh, I remember Michael coming down there to Australia and uh, you, you were living out of your car too. You had a little Honda, I think it was like a Honda hatchback. I mean, yeah. I love the determination. If I put a montage of all these people. Maybe you can share about that, Michael. You, that was a time where you were all fired up and you really were as happy as can be. And uh, that car was packed to the gills. That was not like a van. That was like a Honda hatchback. And you kept the faith and that spark going there in, in this big <laughs> uh, journey and voyage. And there you are as happy as can be. But sh share a little bit about that, that phase in that little Honda. Yeah, it was interesting. Well, we, were, we had a house we were going to go to, and, um, and it was all set up. And just when we were going to move in, it didn't happen. We weren't, it wasn't given for us to be in the house. And so suddenly it was like all this stuff came up. You talk about being joyful. Well, there was a, bu a bunch of stuff that came up before the joy. <laughs> It was like, uh, whoa, you know, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? What's going to happen? You know, uh, I was just divorcing. So there was a whole lot of funds, but they were all sort of frozen at the time while things were being sorted out. And so we're just like, well, what's going to happen here? And all this stuff came up. And then there was this beautiful, beautiful realization that where is my home? Where is my home really? Is it in a house? Is it, in, is it on the street? Is where it's, my home is with God. My home is with my Father in heaven, really. And this was, like a, this was like, it was like an epiphany, like a real, whoa. It was like an awakening moment, I felt, because in that moment, there was all this joy. We're going to be in our car. And we're, talk, we're not just talking about a big Honda. This is a little tiny Honda Civic, the old Honda Civics that were tiny. <laughs> but it was like it was just so joyful. We just didn't care. We're going to sleep on the side of the road. That's okay. Really, like it just didn't matter. We were just in this joy of this full realization, acceptance, and like a full experience that my real home is with my Father in heaven. There's nothing that can satisfy me in this world. There's nothing in form that can compare to that at all or is of any relief, comfort, pleasure at all. You know, 
My home is with my Father in heaven. Being with that and then just being open to that and really not caring, and that's okay to say that in the moment. So what happened over the coming weeks, and it was actually months, was just miracle upon miracle. <laughs> we just showered in miracles. Just, you know, people inviting us in, holy encounters all over the place, being guided, not having to worry about where we're going. We're just traveling along and suddenly a theater came along. There was that movie, uh, uh, hereafter had just come out. We didn't know anything about it, but we were guided to go to the cinema. We went to this, and it was just an amazing experience with this amazing movie. And it was at the night time, we said, what are we going to do, and where are we going to sleep tonight? I can't even remember what happened, but I remember it all just worked out so beautifully. And, you know, even sleeping in a tent for a while with, with one of our friends, her, her kids were in the house, and they were jealous we were in the tent in the backyard. <laughs> it was this luxury tent. You know, it was just like miracle after miracle, and I think that's what it is when we say yes and when our heart is really with our father with the Christ and just saying just being open to the miracles they happen <laughs> and it's not trying to make them happen or even looking forward to them it's just saying yes just moving in the direction just saying okay Jesus I'm under your control now I'm just going to be under Christ's control and letting it unfold and just watch the miracles happen it's amazing and just when you've been showered in them over and over and over again we just like it's just crazy then to try and do anything by myself anymore because I've just been proven wrong so many times when I try and do that. And so, you know, it works out so beautifully when I just say, not my will, but yours, dear Father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, don't even get us started with our car stories, uh, Patrick, because <laughs> we, we could go all weekend with just car stories of uh, miracle car stories, because uh, we've had so many of them. But, but the theme of, I think it is too, um, the, for myself, for, for a lot of us, um, you know, we, we follow the world's formula. You know, Michael, who was just talking there about living in a car, you know, was, had, his own, had a construction company, was the head of the company, a beautiful house, a wife, children, had, had the, the thing that people go, well, you have arrived. You've arrived. If you've got all that, you've done it. You've, you've done what you were here to do. But there was an unfulfillment. There was something inside that was like, there's something calling me to a, to a higher state of mind. And that's my purpose for being here, not accumulating the things that the world would say is the dream, the happy dream, but actually being taken on a journey of, of listen, follow, and really going on that journey. And we're with mm -hmm. you on that. We know that it takes, uh, it takes patience, it takes strength. You know, that's one of the, the strength of God is, is what I trust in, because you have to have that faith and that strength to keep going in the face of what seems to be even judgments in the mind, like this is so slow. You know, that can be... Uh, a persistent judgment that wants to come in there. It's taking too long. But if you really have that spark in your heart, you know, that's going to t carry you, that's going to lift you. And we're all there with you. And that's one of these great things about these uh, online <laughs> retreats. You get a lot of support in many, many, many ways. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So next up is um, Julie Bergeron, David. Oh, hi. <clears throat> Do you hear me well? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Very well. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm so, so happy to be here in this retreat. Oh. And this uh, title really, really inspires me. And, uh, um, yeah, it's uh, living under Christ's control. And it's kind of a Christ control. It's like a, a cruise control, <laughs> uh, a bit like a GPS too. Because and and I have a. It reminds me of uh, what I feel. Um, how can I put it? What I can imagine it is, and I have glimpses of that freedom and and um, an expansion when I when I let myself be in 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 
in his arms. Mm. And, um, and, and a metaphor in my life is that I have no sense of orientation. So south, north, west, east, I never had a glimpse of, except that, okay, the sun is, is uh, going down that way, so it's, it's the west. So, okay. But if I drive, I have no sense of, you know. So when the GPS started, or when I have my first GPS, I was like, oh my God, my life is changing. I can go anywhere now. I just need to listen and follow, <laughs> you know. And it's... Um, so it's been a life changing having a GPS and it's kind of uh, what I expect to be or but in a in a bigger way <laughs> or in a anyway more expensive and um, lately I've been you were asking David um, what keeps uh, what was it what is holding you back and um, I think for me <sighs> there's a lot of shame and uh, it's a shame <laughs> that brings more shame right it's like a, an endless um, <laughs> seems to be an endless darkness that is playing tricks on me and it's shame that i'm i still believe in 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 lack i guess because i'm in lack and i'm going in debt and um i i i, I want to know to i want to understand what is what is the difference between going through darkness? I mean, having s unconscious or, or s darkness from the subconscious because I'm going through a lot of anxiety and fear, like, and, and the difference from before the course in my life is that now I know that this too shall pass. <laughs> I mean, I know that, that it's, um, that it's illusion but when I'm in it even though I, I know it's illusion and I keep doing my lessons and I keep listening to um, to speakers and but I'm still in a lot a lot of, uh, of darkness and when I'm in that darkness I tend to isolate And uh, so I, my question is, what is, so allowing darkness to coming up and release it to the Holy Spirit. But it goes, I mean, it seems like it's endless <laughs> these days, these weeks. And so when we say if we're not in our joy, it means we are in our ego mind. So I'm sometimes so so that this is where the, the guilt and, and the shame comes from, I guess, kind of a, a spiritual, you know, I'm not there yet. <laughs> or So yeah, um, uh, I'm happy to be with you anyways. I'm so happy to be with you mm. and to express. Thank oh. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Yeah, it, it feels like um, the darkness is like this, this dark pit of, um, of un some call it unworthiness or lack. Um, and that's where that deep, deep sense of shame can be. 
And uh, it reminds me of that, um, but that Shania uh, Knowles song, how could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? Like, it's almost like we're all these children and we have these amazing gifts, just spectacular gifts. And, and yet, uh, they've been covered over and, and so we don't have confidence in them. I mean, I, I was talking to somebody recently and I was saying, yeah, I was, I was voted most quiet in my senior class. I was just so shy and I'd, I'd kind of fumble around and, and uh, I, I couldn't even enunciate clearly because I was unsure, I was uncertain, I was unworthy underneath and I didn't have my confidence. So, as we start to open up to miracles, we have to realize we do have to be gentle on ourselves because we're going to have to build a confidence up with our, our miracle working. And, and the best way that we do that is when we are guided together like this in, in different ways, you know, on online retreats, or I remember that time when you came down to to Mexico here and oh my gosh, the, the joy and the laughter and you, you start to feel so wonderful because you can feel the love and you feel it pouring through you and it feels so natural and everything's taken care of too. It's like the whole situation is arranged and, and you, don't, you aren't even trying to figure anything out. It's like you're on a magic carpet ride and, and, and that's, that's what I call a confidence builder. You know, we we need the confidence builders and then once we start to get our confidence going, we get stronger and stronger. Uh, sometimes people will say to me, even with our community, they will say, you know, you have a very strange community. Uh, you know, you have these houses around and now you're going to get another one over in, in Europe now and, and Utah and Mexico and this and this. But these are like little incubators. These are like little safe containers. These are places where, where people can begin to let their, their gifts, their, their, their skills and ability be used not for productivity or to try to expand the gross national product of whatever country or uh, even to, to invent things to make the world a better place. You know, it's just letting those intrinsic, natural, innate gifts that are in there, in your soul and ready to come out, to come out. And then when they do, the most amazing kind of collaborations happen and the most amazing joyful things. We just were just celebrating uh, Svava's album uh, be coming to completion and, and she could tell you, even letting these songs come through, she was trembling because she had never done anything like that before. She, she wasn't a writer and she didn't have confidence in her voice and she didn't know how to put together an album or with all the things, the technical things, recording and mastering and mixing and all kinds of things. And it is like a walk of trust, but it's almost like we just, we water the garden, we water the flowers and then those stems come up and then those flowers come out and then poof, those flowers open in all that sunshine and we go, yeah, this is wonderful, this is this feels great, this feels natural. So, so it's kind of a, you have to really nurture yourself and keep the faith as best you can because, because what's been hiding these seeds all along has been this, this darkness and this shame and this unworthiness. And it's a big turnaround. And, and also it can get overwhelming when you think, is it like a bottomless pit? Does it, does it ever stop? You know, after you, usually when you have a big burst of love, then, <laughs> oh my gosh, like all spiritual ego backlash or ego whiplash comes in. And Jesus even describes that in the Course. You know, he says, when you moved into the light, you will rush to darkness. You know, he's, he's describing almost like a pendulum of, 
of huge joy, expensive joy, not of this world joy, and then shrinking down into like the throes of darkness. Uh, you know, kind of like uh, Edgar Allan Poe, the pit and the pen, you know, you know, or some of the, the raven, you know, some of those old writings that, you know, very, very dark. So we're, we're with you in this because um, we've been called together and, and we, our purpose is the nurturing part, is to find ways to nurture together this love and this light. And, and I, that's how I see you. I remember you when just meeting you. I, I remember all this love that just is pouring through so naturally. And I know that's the real you. And, mm -hmm. and that's our purpose is to do everything we can to strengthen that, you know, to build that confidence. Just like a child needs to build confidence, um, we all mm -hmm. really need to build that confidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, David, I was just just something really resonated with what she said there when she's in the darkness that she can isolate, you know, which I've certainly experienced and that's always been the worst possible outcome <laughs> is when I isolate, when I feel like I'm in the darkness and, and that's where the willingness, a little bit of willingness comes in just to be able to reach out uh, to a mighty companion or, you know, we have a parent support line. Um, there's, it's just this is where the willingness has to, some willingness has to come in, some trust has to come in to say, okay, I, I really don't want to speak to anyone, I just want to isolate, but it's very important at that time to actually reach out. That's, it's always a miracle right there waiting for us. This is a pathway of relationships and, you know, isolation is not it. <laughs> uh, I can really vouch for that one. Every time I've tried to isolate it has always backfired. <laughs> and every time I've reached out, really without exception, has always been a miracle. So I just really encourage you to do that. It's, it's uh, very healing, very supportive, and it's a blessing for everyone <laughs> when you do that. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Okay, next with her hand up is uh, Candace. Go ahead, Candace. Oh, cool. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yes. Okay, good. Sure. Well, when I, um, so I, I left Grand Junction and I packed my car like you guys are talking about a year and a half ago and went to Arizona and I thought, oh, I'll find some you know, of course, miracles group down here. Well, that, that, that didn't pan out so well for me for whatever reason. So then I ended up coming to California, packed up my car again and came to California. And, um, on my way into, uh, I'm, I'm in Fairfax, California. And on my way in, I came by Mare Island and I grew up with Shetland ponies on a ranch in Colorado and horses and that, that Mare Island just piqued my curiosity big time. So eventually I got around to going over there and, and it wasn't anything that, you know, was real pressing for me to go there, but I, I came home the long way one day and came around that way. And as I crossed the Napa river onto Mare Island, I had the most incredible feeling of being so cared for mm -hmm. and it was the most incredible um, feeling of love I've ever I think I've ever felt and um, so here I am driving around these huge ship building ghostly looking huge buildings I'm like where the hell is this feeling coming from I mean it was <laughs> you know it was just such a b bizarre feeling but it just it just kept generating stronger and stronger as I <laughs> drove around through all these monstrous buildings, that are, most of which are empty or just broken windows and just kind of spooky looking places. But I had this deep feeling of maybe I suppose what would be the cared for, clueless, you know, all of that feeling at some and and. I was not feeling that that day, you know, I was feeling kind of carefree because I was out floating around the area on my one day off during the week. And, um, and I just, I've had a wonderful time exploring this whole area since I've been here. I've been here since May, but that was, that was so huge. And I, 
I stopped and watched some of the uh, ferries over on the, the Napa River, and I couldn't really get out to the bay side of it so much, but it was just um, the whole time I was on that island, I felt that. And so when I came back home, I was just, I just felt glowing and just so warm and, and so amazing. And, and I got back home and it was like, God, how do I keep a hold of that feeling? And, and where did it come from in the first place? And then I, um, I just kind of fell back into the hole again. And so I'm like, I went back a couple times. And the second time I went back, of course, it, it sort of generated the memory a little bit. The third time I went back, I went to the museum, the um, uh, Navy ship building museum. And I went and wandered around there for a while. And then I couldn't wait to get the hell out of there. So it obviously had nothing to do with it. But, um, you know, it was just... Um, I kind of tap into a little bit in some of my travels around the area and stuff, but um, I just, I, well, so anyway, the, the gentleman I came here to work with the team, uh, he was uh, working to his end of life and he died in December. So now I know I'm at a place where it's time for me to move on again here in a little while and I'm, I'm getting scared, kid. <laughs> I don't know. I am. Um, At my age and feeling some of the pains I'm feeling, I just don't feel like living in a car is going to work for me. But um, mm. I um, I just feel it is time to um, bring about some changes. And I do pull back. I have been blessed recently. Um, my times when I was working didn't didn't fit in with any of the meetings in this area at all, and I was so frustrated from that. Finally, I've tapped in with Chris, Christine and Dave um, mm. um, over in the Mill Valley area and um, started going to meetings with them and then meeting with them in the mornings and stuff. And uh, But I, I need some help with this. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful, Candace. Thank you for sharing that because it's like it, it can feel like the world is closing in on us and the fear can grow stronger and, and I always think back to even Herman Hesse's story of Siddhartha where even with Siddhartha when he was in the palace there's something not right and um, you know one of the things that really I love about the Course and I love about Jesus' teaching is basically he keeps repeating it over and over and over about how this world has, uh, has disappointed us. Like somehow we're looking for things and we're looking for safety and security and we even sometimes get sentimental and when you were talking about that experience you had with those big buildings, uh, you know, it just brought back a memory for me where I was in uh, Cincinnati and a f my friend Maya from Canada, Nova Scotia came down to visit me and uh, we were having some, just having joyful talks and there at the Peace House and then I said, no, let's, let's go out and I said, I, I know of a place I want to take you and it was one of these giant uh, malls that had closed. It was like a ghost mall. It was like massive stores and there was a few walkers out there, you know, elderly people that were, they were walking around, but it was basically ghost mall. And we just had the most delightful time in Ghost Mall with all the stores closed and this massive hundreds of thousands of square feet of nothing uh, where there was supposed to be this, this hall of commerce, you could call it. <laughs> it just had basically collapsed. And I don't know, there was something funny about, about collapsing halls of commerce because it just again reminded me that, that the world has disappointed me, that I've searched for meaning in this world for a long time and, and hoped there would be meaning. And yet there's something in our mind where we make the turn, where we, we start to realize, you know, that's right, it's, it's, this isn't my home. It's almost like it drives us into 
a point of starting to feel, wow, this is not my home. And there's something that starts to loosen and lighten up because when we're still like driving and looking for it, you know, it's still, it can, the fear can grow greater and stronger, but something, a little tweak happens where we start to realize, okay, I'm, I'm coming home to my true home. I'm going to be in that tractor beam and you've got me now because my best efforts for decades have not put me in, towards that direction, but now I'm, I'm surrendering, I'm giving it over, I'm going to, to trust and be shown. And uh, to me that's, I love hearing people's uh, journeys because I love hearing their stories, uh, the miracle stories of how things opened up for them in such surprising and startling and unexpected ways. And because that's how it went for me. It wasn't something that, I can't say I planned this spiritual journey out and I premeditated every step. I got more clueless uh, the deeper I got into it. And I think I also got more trusting. <laughs> I, was, I was trusting and clueless and those two are really a strong uh, combination. So I, I see, I, I see uh, Christine and David on here, I saw their smiling faces and, I, and in the midst of it, right out there in Mill Valley, you know, you've, you've got what you need for now. And, and we're joined in the prayer of trust that, that you will be shown. Because the ego always tries to project a dark future, you know, and, and actually there, there are angels, there are steps along the way, whatever we need, it will it will be provided, and I really believe that for you. I really believe that. Thank you. Okay, next on the list, <clears throat> excuse me, is Sylvia. Go ahead, Sylvia. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, can you say something, David, so I can see you? Yeah. Hi, Sylvia. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, why I'm here, because I think that these retreats are wonderful um, and I really, really, really want to be living under Christ control. Um, I just finished a five-day retreat in Holland um, and of course I looked at my sound issue again because that's something I want to fix. I can see now I want to fix it. I don't want to fix it, but I think I want to fix it. Um, and I had a beautiful experience being in a little church. The first night um, I heard the clock and I was overwhelmed. I was with my ego and it was like going like that. Yeah. And um, two days later I had a really loving experience. And um, then I start, now I realize, I start thinking that I'm doing it. And then my ego takes over again. Okay. <clears throat> then we had to do a um, forgiveness exercise. Um, and I came to a, a very deep convincing I can see I want to get rid of the sounds, so they must be gone, I must be gone. And that was very, very painful. And when I'm in line with Jesus, I don't feel that. But when I'm not in line with him, I do feel that. That I'm not good enough, I'm not doing good enough, I'm not supposed to be here. Like that. So, um, yeah, I do want to live under Christ's control. And I, I now realize I just continue doing the course. I just continue going to these retreats and whatever I'm supposed to do. And I trust. I need to be gentle with myself, like you said. I need to build confidence. And this is the way I do it. But this deep convincing that I'm, I'm, yeah. 
I'm not worth it, something like that. It's just not true. Mm. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's just not true. And I gave it over to the Holy Spirit, but it doesn't, f doesn't feel like I really did give it over. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Because it's, it, it's very intense um, because of the self-judgments. That's where it gets so intense. I mean, that's why sometimes even people can go to a movie or they can be talking to a friend and they can, you can see it so clearly, uh, the, the call for help, and you can answer so clearly. But sometimes when it just slips in, there's such a, a deep unworthiness that it's, it's very, very intense. And it's like you said, slip, like you can just slip into the eye, slip into the identification, the personal identification, and, and that's where the, the grip is, that's where the pain is. So, the Spirit is very uh, adept at working with us, you know, it will not work with our, like our major jugular, our, our major fears, it, it kind of works to soften things and loosen things, and build our confidence and help us get in the right direction and then we start to get a bit of momentum uh, and a bit of confidence actually starts to come in and uh, mm. it's, that's pretty much the, the way it is even in this world when you're trying to, to master a skill or to master something it takes a while and, and certainly in terms of miracle working and, and really starting to get in touch with our true nature yeah, that's where the being gentle with yourself, uh, you know, comes in because you, it's working. I can tell with you going to this, like this retreat and the different things that you're going to, you're, you're putting the effort in and now you just have to let it kind of take hold and start to grow a little bit stronger. But it's, it's working. It's beautiful. And it's so great that we're here because we share it online and it's everything that gets shared this way is a, it helps build the confidence for everybody. Every time anybody hears a witness or a sharing that this can be done, it, there's something inside that goes, yeah, I can do this too. If Sylvia can do this, I can do this. And you know, that's why we love these, the witnessing that goes on. So thank you. Thank you so much for hanging in there with this. Mm. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, next on the list is Casey. Go ahead, Casey. Hi, thanks so much. Um, I <coughs> I'm so excited to uh, to meet you all and, and David, I've been listening to your YouTubes and speakers for uh, for months. It's uh, I have so many questions and they they come and they go. Um, just trying to get to the heart of what really matters. I just uh, oh my heart's purring too. <laughs> um, I just want to awaken so so badly. I just feel like I will do whatever it takes, and it's sometimes hard to know you know, what to do or where to go. It's like, I try so hard, like, what do you want from me? How can I be helpful? And it seems like nobody cares, you know, like I work in a factory to provide for my family. I got you know, two young kids, um, one who requires like a lot of care. Um, so you only have half a heart. So, you know, it's like I have this family that I um, provide for. And then I, I, um, I just, I just don't always know where I'm, where I'm being led. Like one really, awesome friend in my life. I haven't seen them for years. They sold all their stuff and just moved to Costa Rica, right? And, and, and I got in touch with them again. And it's just like, part of me feels like, oh, wow, I just want to give everything up. And even my family would be open to like, doing all that, like, they're not really attached to the house and trying to survive in the Western world type thing. And then the other part of me is like, oh, I just want to be so involved with, um, your guys' community and, and, and I'm just like, I've started a course in miracles group and I'm finally starting to get some money companions and, and, um, I just, I just feel so torn. Like I feel like every day I feel such a different purpose. Like one day is like a blessing. Cause I get to listen to, you know, your speakers and all day at work. And then the next day it's like, I just feel like I'm just surrounded by people who don't know or 
care or just aren't open to it at all. And I feel so alone. And then some days it's just like, doesn't matter the form because I just feel this deep, intense um, happiness and connection and that whiplash that everyone's been talking about and that, and just that intense darkness and, and going into like extreme light and then feeling lost in, in the darkness again. It's just like, I still, even though I've been doing the course for a decade, it's really hard to know sometimes which, which way's up and which way's down. And I just, I just, I just have wanted to speak to you so badly for months and I feel very grateful to be here. And thank you for all of your love, David. Oh, thank you, Casey. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, this is so touching. You know, it's like you you have found your your calling and your direction, and and you have this well, this little constellation around you, and and uh, and you're doing this for yourself and for for everyone, including the constellation, and and that's important to remember uh, because as you move along, you're just going to be. Uh, there will be these nudges, these little prompts, these little things that will come in. Uh, and sometimes they don't fit in the structures of the world, but you just have a strong feeling uh, inside. And, and mm -hmm. so I think if you keep focusing on, on, on the communication aspect of it, I mean obviously at the, at the factory these aren't people that necessarily have the same calling and uh, that was one of my early lessons you know I I got so excited I thought oh my god this is everything to me this this means everything to me but a lot of times I would try to talk to people about this and and it was pretty clear that they didn't see it that way at all and uh, sometimes even with in my family you know it's it's, my mother said, you know, I don't need a minister, I've got a minister. And I would talk to different ones and, and they would say, you need to find other people that are interested in these things, David. And I'd, I'd say, oh yeah, that, I think I do. So it just evolved. But if you keep communicating and you keep the, the flame strong in yourself and, and doing the things that you feel nurture you, then the people will start showing up. And I just kept following and following. I got happier and happier and happier. And then uh, when you get start to get really happy, then people want to live with you uh, or live near you. You know, I remember back in Cincinnati, we had, we had, I had a little peace house and then there was renting a house here and down there. We, we started renting houses on the same street. <laughs> because I was so, so happy. They just wanted to be around me. And, and yet, it's, it's, that's just a symbol to the mind that as you start to really gain confidence in this and, and really go for this, then the people will show up that will play their parts and that will, will help you in this. And uh, so we're just joined with you in this. It's so beautiful that we can, I can see you and I can feel your your passion for this, and we can just stir it up for each other, you know, keep stirring up that passion and keep it going. That's why we do these online retreats every month, is because it's really nurturing for all of us. It, it just gives us an opportunity to extend this, and, and you're doing it right now. I know everyone's watching you and, and feeling, feeling your heart when you're speaking, so thank you. Thank you so much, Casey. Mm, it's beautiful. Mm. Mm. Ah, so sincere, so beautiful. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. It's always nice to see a fresh face. <laughs> okay, David, next we have Beth. Who? Elf. She's come back. Beth. Beth. <laughs> me, it's not me. <laughs> it's not you, though. Not you. Okay. I, I don't know, maybe it is, is it me? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. I'm, wow, because I was, I, I didn't think I was this part of the, uh, I, I was later in, I was going to go after Mary and uh, Heidi. Um, they're my mighty companions, that's so funny. Because uh, anyway, we had, I wanted, that's what I wanted to share because we've had such a wonderful um, 
you know, this mighty, mighty, whatever, <laughs> the mighties. And we have, we, we share um, on Marco Polo, you know, our stories and what we're going through. And it's been magical. Um, just the Holy Spirit is um, guiding us so amazingly. Um, and I wanted to share because I've been struggling with the issue of um, guidance. It's, you know, this issue because um, that we were, um, you know, we have me, I'm, you know, I'm medical field acupuncture. We have a nurse, we have a medical doctor and, you know, really great spiritual guides. And, um, you know, one of our members is in a lot of pain and, and she shared her struggles and, and my heart just went, out because that's my that's my work you know but she's in Utah and I'm in New York and I was just really moved and um, um, see but I, I get really um, angry at God <laughs> because you know I was like you know what is it you know like there's this person that I care about I know I could help her but she's not here and you know so I get really um, you know, what, what is going on, God? You know, what are you doing? You know, and we were talking about the whole idea of we're not bodies, you know, we're spirit and all this stuff, but the body's hurting, you know, so that's, um, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's really uh, bringing her down. So we were all just, you know, reaching out to her in love. And it brought out all of this stuff for all of us. We just, um, you know, I went out, of course, and I'm, I'm like sending her uh, ear seeds, you know, because I'm, and I'm telling her to take Epsom salt baths, and I'm like, you know, doing, you know, um, but you're not sure how to, how to act, right? You know, is that ego using, you know, seeing her as a body, or is that my spirit reaching out in love? I know this would help her, you know, because that's my training, and. Um, and we just, it, it was just all so wonderful. And um, one of our members, Seema, she's a medical doctor, and I didn't even realize that she has a whole uh, website on uh, just um, meditating about chronic pain. She has this whole thing, and it's just about, you know, um, Course in Miracles and align, aligning with spirit and, um, you know, putting ourselves in... Um, you know, in, in Christ's control, you know, and that, that um, not that the body isn't, doesn't exist, but that's the main goal, right? And um, anyway, it just, it was really beautiful, and, and it's helped me to look at my own uh, work in a different way, um, that I realized that a lot of times in my work, because I'm motivated by fear, I motivate my patients through fear, <laughs> you know, like, you know, if you take that drug, it might do this or, you know, and, and there's a lot of fear. And, um, and so it helps, it had helped me to um, realize that the true motivator it should be love, you know, that it's, that's really um, what's going to get them truly healed, you know, that, you know, keeping them in the cycle of pain, although they may feel better, initially it's not going to be a real healing so and it's it's really been fruitful <laughs> with um mary and um you know so so it may turn into something really um interesting um but my ego wants to like i had a whole marketing camp campaign and you know like, like i really you know i went into this like huge you know thing where um you know, I'm going to like call this person and they're going to do this and, you know, we're going to save the world through acupuncture and SEMA, you know, it, you know, it's just going to be, um, you know, and, 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 you know, is that stepping into magnitude or is that just my ego going amok? <laughs> so, but I guess the main, what I came to is that it's in the moment, you know, each moment that um, there's nothing that's more important than be, me being at peace and uh, focusing on love and Jesus in the moment, you know? And so if anything is pulling me out of that, then that's where, you know, no matter what my idea of what the form should look like, I don't know if that makes any sense, <laughs> but, but anyway, it, it's been, um, 
I think it's so important, the joining, you know, and the sharing. And, um, you know, because each of us kind of had a part to play in the whole um, revelation that it was for me. You know, each story, we were at a different level, a different understanding of it, but each person informed the whole. And, and it was... Uh, it was, it was beautiful, for, I think, for all of us. So we'll see. <laughs> so, wow, anyway, I'm sorry, I wasn't prepared no, to talk. I really didn't think I was so close off with the lineup. But. It's been a, a few t times in a row you've come on, and, and uh, we love your transparency and, and the way you're finding each other. I've been working with Seema for years and different ones, and, and Mary, and the ones on here, you know, it, you're finding your voices, your, 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 it's the healing, it's, it's with the symbols that you can relate to. This is exactly how it works. And uh, I've been watching a little series some of you might enjoy, it's called God Friended Me. And it's about a, an atheist uh, whose father is a reverend, but uh, he keeps getting these friend requests from a God account, a Facebook God account, and oh, what an adventure, you know, for it. This is like a great atheist adventure as he's following the signs and following the opportunities and can't figure it out, but feels the healing happening. And you're just these few times that you've been on, you know, when you've spoken, we can feel you're, you're authentically like, you know, however you stumbled upon this, uh, it's happening. And you're going for it, and we're all right there with you, and we love it. And it, you weren't even planning to speak, and this another time the Spirit's got you on there a, a third time. So it's beautiful. Go for it. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Love the enthusiasm. <laughs> beautiful. Okay, David, next is Angela Conway. Oh, it's me. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Um, thank you um, for being here, everyone. Um, David, it's lovely to see you again. I last saw you in Australia a few years ago, and um, and it's been too long because I want to do more retreats with you and go to Utah and go to the monastery because I really feel I'd love to do a silent retreat but but this is what I want to talk about is my lack my I have this feeling um I can't get my bill I can't get my debts paid I can't get enough money to um you know to do the things I want to do um, so there's this feeling of lack in my life and I don't quite know how to address it. So if you could clarify that for me, it would be great. And also I feel that my life's been showing me all my life to, to not really accumulate belongings like attachment and detachment from things. Um, that's fine. I, I don't really have much attachment to anything except my dog here <laughs> and my cats. But um, it's what was I oh, it's a house. I want a house. I've always had this thing that I want my own home. And and when um, Michael was talking about, I think Michael was saying about giving up his home and that um it's i haven't got a home and there's no even no, no no way i'm going to get a home because i can't get the deposit together but i feel like i need jesus wants me to let go of that need for a home but i don't know how to do that so that's my question slack and letting go and, and letting god and and just being open to the spirit I feel like I need to control everything and, you know, I don't want to, but I, I don't know how to let go. So maybe just even a prayer from you to, 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 to let me, allow me to let go at some point, you know. 
that's all yeah. I've got to say. I hope, hope you understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Angela. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting you mentioned prayer too, because it's like the, the prayer <laughs> of what's really going on with prayer is we're asking for an experience. So, so for you, a home represents uh, something important and also uh, uh, being able to, to uh, travel and do the kind of workshops and retreats you want to do. Um, Actually, I was contacted not too long ago by a woman down in the land down under, except over in New Zealand, uh, who basically said, Hey David, I've, I'm living in a great space now. I just, I've got this house and I want to give it and use it for spirit. And then uh, Will, Will Wilson there, who's right on our uh, thing. We, I, we got a little Facebook group going there and and I told Kirsten, who's going to be in Japan, and, and we started uh, Janelle and Will and, and Sharon and get them all going. And then uh, Kirsten had a miracle come through of being, finding a ticket to drop down there. So, so she's coming down there to Auckland, which is not too far across there from Australia. You know, it's down there in the same region. But, but it all starts with a little spark, like a little invitation where somebody says, I, I've got something I want to share and extend. I hadn't seen or talked to or chatted with Janelle since I did a retreat years, many years ago, Waiwera uh, in uh, New Zealand. And she said, oh yeah, I remember that. I, remember, I was there. And, and we started talking and then she started sharing. And so now there's this gathering happening. I think they may even, Will's trying to get it broadcast, so, so even if you can't fly across, it's in the same part of the world and you could join in, hopefully, uh, remotely. So, I think that's, I'm glad you're speaking up, Angela, because I feel your love and your desire to connect, and I would, you know, on, on a chat, uh, when, when this is over, or even during this, why don't you give Will, a, Will Wilson a little uh, call, chat there and he can tell you how the the retreats happening uh, and even if you can't fly over there and even if you don't have a house that beautiful black dog you've got there and and in that space you are you can join in with with some like-minded people that are are uh, wanting the same thing that you want <laughs> as well <laughs> <laughs> He's all fired up. <laughs> Thank you, Angela. Well, Slava has received a lot of songs, and so did you have one in mind that you wanted to uh, sing for us tonight? Yeah, I would love to sing <clears throat> another new one called Leave It All To Me. Okay. <clears throat> i 
light your sweet light if you wanna shine bright if you wanna shine bright light your light just love how the theme of the Spirit can reach us in so many different ways and, and the Spirit is always going to reach us with the symbols that are relevant to us, that are the symbols that are meaningful to us. So I love how this awakening is not rigid or based on theologies and doctrines, it's based on the miracle and, and joy and being inspired. And we have, I think, we, our ministry really attempts to, uh, to extend in many, many ways. I was talking with Jason earlier and he has a, a show called From the Bottom Up, which is a line from the Course, Healing Occurs from the Bottom Up, in the sense that it's very relevant. It just deals with the issues and the perceptions that are very relevant to you and then takes you higher and higher and higher into higher states of mind but and you have a, also a morning show coming so those are it's kind of just starting up now here in March it's been a little bit of a hiatus a little bit of a break for some of you to follow along but maybe you could share you're excited about getting those fired up again like morning show and a Saturday show yeah we thought because we had to wait for the studio to get ready it was a uh maybe a month or two behind what we thought would be ready. So, March, so we're ready and you can, I don't know if you can see the bookshelf, but you might see it tomorrow if David's on. But we'll start Monday morning with um, 
wake up with Jason. Uh, it'll be 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, and it'll be Monday to Friday. And then Saturday, I think nights, most likely. We still haven't picked a time. We'll do the From the Bottom Up show, and David and I, he's not going to be here a lot of Saturdays for the next month, so we might do some pre-records and incorporate that, but yeah, so that part's in prayer, but it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. The other thing is about, we started doing these online retreats uh, last January, and some of you might remember if you were around for some of those early retreats that we, we actually made ourselves available for one-on-ones during the retreat. And uh, it's been pretty full on for us. We haven't done that, but actually Jason was talking about having an interest in doing some one-on-ones because uh, oftentimes you'll write emails to us or pour your heart out. And some of you have been with us for, uh, for months and years and, and have things that you maybe aren't quite as comfortable sharing with everybody in, in a global way, but, but that's something we've talked about um, is po perhaps this weekend just making that available. Um, we would make it available on a chat where you would be able to uh, to re make a request that way. And also we have the Zoom room open so uh, maybe you were watching and you were touched by somebody that spoke or somebody that spoke uh, shared something that really seemed extremely helpful and you wanted to continue a, a dialogue or a conversation, very much like Beth was talking about, you know, she's, she came on the show and then she saw Mary and, and then they got in contact and then Seema and, and suddenly you have a group of people that have some common symbols that really feel comfortable with each other and, and that's another way that these kind of online retreats can be used in a very helpful way because if you if you do use that feature, I, I believe it's in the Zoom chat function, you can actually uh, chat with somebody where, that you found was very helpful for you and uh, it can open up some connections that way. Because that's the way the spirit works, it's a little bit like the God Friended Me uh, series I've been watching where it gets a, a friend request and every time the main character follows the friend request on Facebook, it turns into uh, being helpful. And, uh, and that's what the main character, who's, who's an atheist, is noticing that every time he follows the friend request, every single time he is used in a helpful way to bring some kind of a blessing, some kind of a, an answer, or some kind of a lightness to the one that he was given the friend request from from the God account, you know. So in one sense, um, we've got our own uh, God account going here with all of you. And if you see somebody or hear somebody on here that actually you really feel like, wow, I, I would like to uh, chat further with them, then please use the, the Zoom chat service as well. Because that's, that's just another way of God working through us all and Spirit working through us. It's, it's voluntary too. Did you see the episode where he, he's, he's angry at God, God account for giving him a request, so he says, I'm not going to do it, so God unfriends him. <laughs> right. It's called unfriended. <laughs> unfriended by God. <laughs> so then he gets all nervous and he's like, he goes and follows the assignment and God friends him back. Yeah. It's just a symbol. It's all symbols. Like uh, the, the, the picture on the God account was uh, like an, a heart shaped cloud on a blue yeah, yeah. sunny day and then one time he gets really rebellious and he's not going to follow God. He gets actually defiant with God and then the, the symbol changes to a lightning bolt <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of gets his attention. <laughs> but it's all just symbols. Um, we're, we're not here to feel uh, confined or trapped. The symbols are being used by the Spirit to bring us happiness and joy and, and have our hearts open up and, and that's been my experience all these years. I just find that uh, I love meeting the people, I love seeing your faces, I love sharing the miracles uh, and uh, you're all very dear uh, 
Helena, I, I got your, forwarded your email from, from Jenny and it was so dear and, and then you just had that, those attack thoughts going and just concerned that you would be burdening me or us and believe me, you are not burdening us, you are dear to us, you are a dear sister that we rejoice in every time we think of you and have an opportunity and uh, we're just there so uh, if you have anything you want to share now and also like I said on my re reply to you, I, I would love to talk with you and that's the kind of the vibe we're feeling more with some of these one-on-ones and just talking a little more deeply about things because it can get kind of crazy sometimes and uh, we're we're a lifeline to each other in this, you know. It's uh, when I'm watching that uh, that God friended me uh, show. I'm thinking of all the beloveds and how we love to have make those contacts. So we just, yeah. Is there anything you want to share here at the the closing of tonight? <laughs> Gosh, I don't want to open up a can of worms right now since so it's time. But I do look forward. I just appreciate that um, that yeah, we're all in it together and it can seem pretty crazy at times and yet just to keep will yeah, just who cares? Just reach out and keep connecting. Um that's what matters most, and that just means a lot to hear. So I'll be calling you. Okay, <laughs> very good. Um, I look forward to sharing maybe tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I just I appreciate everybody here. It means yeah. a lot. Oh, beautiful! Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> that's the that's the spirit of the whole thing, right there. That's <laughs> it, heart to heart, and reaching out, and and that to me, that's really what healing is. You know. One calls out and says, hey, I need some help, the other is there. And, and there can be no greater purpose for life than to be there for one another, to be of support, to be nurturing. Uh, when it gets crazy, you know, you know just to say, I, I got to talk to somebody, uh, I'm just bouncing off the walls here. And uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we live for that. That's really what our whole community is based on, is that support because we know that it's been called ego backlash, whiplash, all kinds of different names of, yeah, <laughs> crazy, craziness, but we're there for you. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I think we're, we've come to the end of the, the hour, but thank you so much. Thank you all for uh, tuning in and joining in this way, and it's a very deep topic, so we'll be continuing on with this under Christ's control, because it's really, that's the call of our heart, that's the prayer of our heart, to surrender it over and to, it's like the prayer in the Course in Miracles is, Holy Spirit, decide for God, for me, which is just another way of saying, I don't want to make any decisions on my own, I want to be in my intuition, I want to be inspired, I want to have joy permeate all my decisions as I move through this world and navigate time and space and then wake up uh, to a, a bright reality and that's what we're, we're all in this for together. So thank you for joining us, it's just been just such a precious time here. And thank you Swava for the music. Thank you. Slava's album is just just finished and she's actually just getting ready this week to upload it to things like Spotify and iTunes and Yeah. Everywhere. YouTube music and Yeah. And it's called Divine Essence. Essence. And it's got a picture of Slava walking on water <laughs> with angel wings. And holding light. And holding light, holding light in her hands. You can't miss that one. <laughs> it's good. So thank you. Thank you all. We love Bye. you. We love you. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> Beautiful.
And thank you, Michael. You want to give a closing word there from Mexico? <laughs> a closing word from Mexico. <laughs> yeah, much love. It's just been beautiful these last couple of hours. And thank you for, for joining. And uh, I just feel very blessed being here. So, And uh, we get to join again tomorrow. So be gentle with yourself. It's like it's very deep, these, these comings together. So... You know, just have a nice night or morning, whatever the time is in the world, because I did notice the participants really are from all around the world now um, in many different countries and many different time zones. So thank you. Be gentle with yourself and uh, let's see you tomorrow. Thank you.